So this particular trip, we started fishing kind of our known good fishing spots by hitting rock piles and reefs and rocky points, thinking that this, this kind of mid part of July, the fish are going to be moved out onto those spots. But with our warmer water temps, although they weren't super warm, they were in that 74 to 76 degree and we had really calm conditions, we really expected to see fish off of the rocks. And for the most part, we didn't. We just kept kind of grinding it out and we were able to pattern it in pretty quick. So we're gonna kind of roll through some of this footage as we go and it's almost in sequence of how our day went here. So let's start out. Okay, at this point we had already fished a few rock spots and we moved into this area and we know there's weeds between some of the rocks here on this particular spot. I hook into something and at first you treat every hookup as a muskie and they pretty much give up so we knew it was a smaller pike but we raised about four muskies in this particular spot and because there was weeds in there it was giving us the impression that we are on weeds so now we moved up to another spot on the lake and this is thick heavy cabbage around us and i was using a dancing raider and if you guys want to see how i use a dancing raider just uh, check the link right here it hit as soon as it hit the water, but we had another muskie laying in the weeds right in front of us. So That's as I brought this it? one in, yeah, it was kind of that? funny because the bigger muskie was actually looking oh, at the smaller one. And because it was there. a smaller tiger, it? No. No. Dave asked if I wanted to net it and I said no. So we didn't even bother. I just yeah, unhook it out from the boat here. All right, at this point, we had kind of pattered them into weeds. This last spot where I just picked up that one on the dancing raider, we had seen probably four or five pretty active fish in there and a couple that were lazy just laying up inside the weeds there. So we were starting to get it patterned out, and we knew it some more spots that we wanted to try. So the next spot, after a quick boat ride, we stopped at is a big open water reef, but the this particular one has some weeds, isolated weed patches up amongst the rocks there. So the opening segment of this video, when the fish almost hits Dave, it come out of this spot, and here's a couple more that come out of this same spot. So I have one that swipes at me at the front of the boat, but I don't show that footage, and then Dave has one come in on him hard here. Oh, he took a swipe at her, Dave. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and they pulled it out of the water. I got one on me. Look at this. Oh, he's going to hit you. It turns off. Dave sticks with the figure eight. I'm going to let this play out because it's important to watch right here. The fish come back and took another swipe. So that's key. Always stick with your figure eights when those fish come in like that. Even if it turns off. In this case, we didn't hook into them. But you got to stick with it. And if Dave would have just pulled that lure out of the water, that would have been another missed chance. That guy came hard, man. Yeah, that was definitely more aggressive though. First one was smaller and he actually took a swipe at me. Okay, now we had really moved a lot of fish and they were starting to get more aggressive and we we're feeling a lot more confident on what we were doing here. So we made a little bit of a run and I'm going to include this next clip just because I think it's ironic on how it happens so fast. It reminds me a lot of Texas's power trip, except where I look at power trip as a combination well, look at that. of like... I just put it in the water. Literally, yeah, right there. There's two. There's two, Glenn. There's another one right there. Jesus. They're little, but yeah. Now we're going to make a quick boat run, and because we got them patterned down into the weeds, and like I say, we're pretty confident on what we're throwing and what we're doing. We're moving into this huge weed line, and this is kind of going to be our make or break for the evening. We knew we had to kind of finish out on a strong spot. So we're out on a huge weed line. I think if you watch around the boat, you'll see some weeds in the video. I hook into something right away. We're thinking it's a muskie, and then it just kind of gives up the fight. So a telltale pike. We'll let it run out here for a second. There, you can see all the weeds around us off the side of the boat. 
We're seeing multiple fish in this bay and in these weeds. The only thing that wants to go today, eh? Yeah. Not of my northern, but... So I'm gonna fast forward through a, a piece here because everything happens in sequence now. Everything's going super quick. We're seeing fish, we're moving fish. So my very next cast, I cast out here and just watch what happens here now. Completely T-bones it and tosses the bait basically as I'm trying to set in. That's just a bad timing deal right there. Adam. Oh, he had that thing. I'm throwing a Dadson. It's kind of a silvery Cisco with a dangle blade. And that typically wouldn't be my first choice. I think in an earlier video this year, I talked about some lures that I was really expecting to use this year. And this was one of them right here, which this is a, an over under, it's a 10-9 by Dadson. And just check out the video right here. I really thought this was gonna be one of my go-to baits, but somehow this one here, and this color has really turned into being my go-to bait for this year. So because I just missed that one on that bait, I'm just gonna stick with it and I'm gonna ride it out. So like a few casts later, here's what happens. As I start reeling in here, I'm probably like my next cast or next couple casts, I have a bunch of weeds on and I just pull it out of the water and watch what follows up. Look at the middle of the screen here. Just hanging you out see too, a lazy musky just kind of roll. The water definitely feels warmer here. It's not. No, I know it's not, but it feels it. So, we are seeing multiple fish. We, we know it's going to happen. We just seen that lazy follow. This is my very next cast. I pull in, and we're just essentially what we call carpet bombing this weed bed. We're just throwing it's everything like we can at it. We're sticking hole. with our confidence bait. Yeah. It's way out from the boat here. This time I know it's a muskie. It's pulling hard. It's fighting. It's got the head shakes. There's some of those telltale head shakes. Finally, we get one in the bag on on this otherwise tough night. Ooh, that's all bent. Hey guys, Glenn McDonald, 54 bust, and Dave and I have been moving fish. Dave's got hit, had one on briefly. We've been moving a ton of fish and weeds. We're in a huge weed bed here, and we started just throwing blades. Dave's got a spinner bait. I got a Dadson with a dangle blade. We got one in the bag here. We'll have a quick look at it. It hit way out from the boat and it is full of piss and vinegar. Nice solid little. We'll get a quick picture here and we'll get her back in. Hey later, buddy. That was a lot of goddamn work <clears throat> for one fish. Yeah, it was a lot of work for one decent fish in the bag at the end of the day, but you know what? We'll take it. And those are the kind of days that you just have to grind it out and just keep patterning things as you go and sticking with some of your confidence baits. And I know we've talked about that a little bit in the past here, but we really believe that that's true. When you start to figure out what the fish want, you got to stick with your confidence baits and stuff that you know you can throw in those type of situations. So if you guys like this type of content, please like and subscribe, leave a comment or question below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And until then, we'll see you out on the water. 54 bust. Stick around. Here's a preview of next week's video right now. Okay, pull her out of the bag here and have a look at her.